Welcome. My name is Van Richards. I'm a chartered financial consultant, and today I'm talking about a unique company that's called the Meshrich Company. It's a real estate company, and the reason why I picked it today is because this company has the potential to be the next GameStop, the next AMC. It's possible that it could be the next company that is vulnerable to a short squeeze. So we're going to go ahead and begin in talking about this company today, the Mace Rich Company, today on the Daily Stock Analysis. Let's, say, let's get started. Thank you a lot for joining me today. If this is your very first day, go ahead and sign up for this program so that you can get it on a regular basis and you can get the notifications of when I have new content that comes out. If you're listening to me on YouTube, go ahead and hit that bell and subscribe so you can get the great information that comes to you on a regular basis. If you're listening to it on a podcast, make sure that you follow me because there's lots of good information that comes out through a podcast. And podcasts are so convenient. You can use them for all sorts of different things. And I'm on just about every podcast platform that I think is imaginable. And to begin today, I want to say thank you to our first sponsor, which is Richard's Financial Planning. If you are frustrated with your finances and you need some help to help you get going in the right direction, go over to richardsfinancialplanning.com and you can learn a lot. If you're going to listen to this program today and come into it with the idea that you're going to learn something, you're going to take a lot away from it. That's what we try to do through Richard's financial planning is we try to educate you and help take the frustration out of your finances. So go over to richardsfinancialplanning.com and get started learning a little bit more about that company. All right, let's go ahead and get started into today and talk about the Mace Rich Company. You know, the reason why, I, I want to set this up just for a little bit. There is so much news that's out there right now about, best, about uh, GameStop and about AMC and the way that short sellers are operating and the way that those companies are making the prices go up. Well, it's really not the companies that are making the prices go up like the short sellers. It's actually you, the general public that listen to this type of program, you that go onto Reddit or you that go onto YouTube and you find out information and then you think, I think I'd rather buy this stock rather than sell it. Now, the way that I'm going to portray this to you today is I'm going to educate you just a little bit about short selling and the way that it works. And I'm going to focus that information towards the Mace Rich Company. Now, the reason why that I picked the Mace Rich Company is because this company has a very high short interest. There's a lot of short sellers that are putting a lot of volume on this company and are borrowing against the shares that they have. We're going to talk about that just a little bit. But I think it's it's best to kind of get an idea what the real direction is of this company and understand the way that they're structured and what the possibilities are from a fundamental investment standpoint. Now, short selling is more of a technical type of investment strategy. Technical means we look at graphs and we look at history and that type of thing. And that gives us some information as to whether we want to own this stock or we want to sell this stock. When we look at fundamentals, fundamentals are going to be things like what their actual earnings were and what their, their profits were. So we're going to take a balance of those two things today as we go through this program. And the best place to start is going to be to talk just a little bit about the company so that you can identify how it is structured and understand how its structure may actually affect its valuation. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. The Mace Rich Company in itself is really a, they own class A regional malls. They're a real estate company. Most of their businesses in California, New York, and Arizona, 26.7% in California, 23.1% in New York, 16.2% in Arizona. Now pay attention to that because those states are significant. They also have 9.4% of their revenues from Pennsylvania and Virginia. They have another 9.1% of their revenues from Colorado, Illinois, and Missouri. And then they also have uh, New Jersey and Connecticut, 7.3% of the revenues come from those areas. Oregon alone has 4.3% of the revenues. Then there's Indiana, Iowa, Kentucky, North Dakota, and Texas that make up the remaining 3.9% of their revenues. Now, 
I want you to think back just for a moment to the to the states that I talked about first. I talked about New York, California, California and Arizona. Those states you're going to notice have been the states where the state governments have been more draconian in the way that they are uh, uh, taking moves against the coronavirus. They're, they're imposing lockdowns more, especially in California, which is where most of the real estate for this company is. Now, I think that that's going to have a strong influence on what's going to be reported for their uh, fourth quarter that will be coming out soon. Now, they're going to have an earnings call. I believe it's around February the 11th, so we want to keep an eye out for that. Now, when I first started doing this, I started thinking, well, maybe we'll just wait till February the 11th and we'll start talking about this company after it comes out. But that's too late at that point in time. And the reason is, is the short interest on this stock is really, really high. Let's talk about that just a little bit. It got hammered today, really down 17.41%. This stock has vacillated wildly in between around $15 and $20 just today. But if we take a look at this stock, I'm going to use the same formula that I use almost every day when I talk about stocks. I talk about the earnings, the stability, the earnings, and the competitiveness. And we don't want to overlook those, but we're, those are fundamental issues. But we're also going to look at some of the technical issues. And the technical issues are going to be influenced by the fundamentals. Okay. The first fundamental thing that I always look at is I look at the moat, which is going to be that invisible barrier that's between the company and their competitors. Now, Morningstar really removed the moat. They said that this company doesn't have a moat at all, but I would say, in my opinion, they have a very thin moat. And the reason is, as far as proprietary assets go, they are a class A regional mall company. The malls that they have are the ones that you're going to want to go to when this virus is, is behind us. You're going to want to take your children to go see Santa Claus at the mall, and you're not going to pick some mall in the middle of nowhere, you're going to pick one of the nicer malls where you can go and have an experience. And that's the type of malls that Mace Rich has. So I look at it from the standpoint of they might not have, let's say, intangible proprietary assets from that standpoint, but they have real estate that can't be replaced. And that's significant. Now, the switching cost, I believe, is significant too, because you're going to have some companies that are trying to go into brick and mortar more than they were in the past because they want to get into quality locations. So switching cost is big. They don't have a network effect. There's no real cost advantage and they're a small company. So they really don't have any cost advantage that's there either. Now, before we get into the, the uh, fundamentals, let's talk a little bit about the technicals with this particular company. And I think to do that, I want to educate you just a little bit more on the idea of short selling. There is a very high number of shares of this company that are pledged, that are shorted in the market right now. So if you understand this, just hang on or, or speed past this if you're watching it on the replay, but or listening to it on the replay, but I think that I'm gonna be able to help you understand a little bit more about actually what short selling is. Short selling works kinda like this. A short seller borrows shares of stock and they pay a fee to borrow those stock. Now, there's terms to a loan that they have and the return of the shares in full value is one of them and they return it on a specific date. Now, the short seller turns around and they sell those borrowed shares on the open market for cash. Once they have that cash, they set and they wait and they wait and they wait. If the stock goes down, they repurchase the shares at a lower price and then they pocket the profit. The thing is, that might not ever happen. If the stock value goes up and up and up, the big problem is this. Those borrowed shares must be paid for at the higher price and it could keep going up and up. That's the short squeeze, squeeze problem. That's the problem. The possible loss is absolutely unlimited. Now, it's important. I want to say this to all of you out there who are just dabbling in investing. Understand the risk of where you're going to be putting your money before you start putting your money anywhere. It doesn't matter whether it's going to be through me or somebody else. Find a fiduciary advisor wherever you're at and get some help if you need some help with your finances. Now, let's look at the short statistics right now on this particular stock. 
there are only 149.47 million shares which are outstanding. That means that the company issued that many shares to the public and that's the, many, that's the amount that are available. The float, when you start looking at that statistic, the float is the number of shares that are actually on the market. There's really only 91.5 million shares that are on the market. The rest of them are held at the company as treasury stock. The shares that are shorted, this is the big deal right now when we look at this. And this is the type of thing that exists with GameStop and AMC. And actually their shares that are shorted are much higher. There's only 91.5 million shares on the market right now for the Mace Rich Company, but 78.54 million of those are shorted. That means that 85.84% of the shares that are out there are shorted, they're leveraged. Now remember, when you look at short interest, there's one problem with short interest. The problem is that most of the information is at least two weeks old. The information that I'm giving to you right now is from January the 15th. It really only gets reported about once every two weeks. So I would say that the short, the, the short percent of float number is much higher than 85% right now. If you look at the volume on this particular company. Now the short ratio is important. Right now it's 18.43, which was reported on January the 15th. Let's understand a little bit more about what that short ratio really tells us. The short ratio, I, I don't want to get too geeky on you, but basically what it is, is you take the number of shares that are sold short. Remember, go back and watch the video if you want to understand what that was. Then you take the average daily trading volume like today's volume was around 14 and a half million shares, which is really pretty high. The day, the short ratio is the days it would take for all of the short shares in the market to be covered. That means all of them basically to be paid for, to be redeemed from that point. Now the average short ratio for a company that's not under pressure is about one to four. And that's pretty optimistic when we're looking at companies and you're looking at short ratios. When you start to get to a, a short ratio that's above 10, there's a lot of pressure which is being put on that company. Now let's take a look a little bit further about what that means. A low short interest ratio means that there's a lot of optimism. Remember I told you a moment ago that if you had a number between one and four, that's an optimistic number. But when you get above 10, you're going to have a high short interest ratio. And that's a, there's a contradiction with that. And what do I mean? It could be good and it could be bad. What's being set up if it's a very high short ratio is the short squeeze. And that's what's going on right now with AMC and GameStop. What we're seeing is that as the, as, as the market is... The, the value of the shares should be going down because that's what the short sellers are anticipating. They've gone on to the news, they've done press conferences, they've done whatever, and you're going to see in a few moments the numbers that are actually being reported by some of these different uh, technical analysts or, or fundamental analysts, and they're saying that the share value is low. It should be going down. But when you all, the people who are out there who are the, the, the general public, you start buying shares. You say, hey, I think that the Mace Ridge company has a lot to offer. It could possibly go higher. So you keep buying, you keep buying, you keep buying. That price goes up. The short seller now starts to panic. So what they're trying to do now is they're selling the shares that they shorted and they're buying the shares actually long. They're, they're redeeming them. And what that's doing is it's making the profits, of the, the, the value of the stock go even higher. And they begin buying more and more of the stock, which is going to cover their short positions. That's the short squeeze. And friends, that's what's happening right now with GameStop. That's what's happening with AMC. And to some degree, that's what's been happening with the Mace Rich Company. But this is the difference with the Mace Rich Company. When you look at AMC and you look at GameStop, the value of the stock is far over top of what its actual intrinsic value should be. But the Mace Rich Company is different. If you look at the fundamentals, which I'm going to talk about next, their fundamentals are actually reasonable. It's selling at a bargain. 
if it goes even lower, it could be even more of a bargain. So let's take a look and see what that, what, why that is. Why, is, why do I think it's going to go down? Because when we look at 2019, the revenues for the company were $685 million for the first time in nine months. Now, the way I got this, I had to go back and I had to pull off their financials off the internet. I looked at their 10Q for 2019 and I looked at their 10Q filing for 2020. And when we looked at it for the first nine months of 2020, it was $591 million. That's a 13.72% decrease in revenues. Okay, are you sitting down for this next bit of information? Because it's going to be a gangbuster. It's going gonna, it's gonna to shock you just a little bit because we're going to talk about the net profits and losses. Well, it's going to be losses. When we look at the actual net profits for the Mace Rich Company, for the first nine months of 2019, it was $69.92 million. For the first nine months of 2020, it was a loss of $39.785 million. Friends, that's a decrease of 156.89%. That is why a lot of the analysts are saying this stock is going to go down. That's why they're shorting this stock is because where it's at right now at about $15.70, they're saying it's going to go lower. We'll talk a little bit more toward the end of this about how that's going to be going toward the future. Toward the future. Now, we're looking at the possibility that the values could be going down, but I'm going to be an optimist and I'm going to say, hey, there's people out there with their kids that want to go see Santa Claus at the mall and they want to have a quality experience. That's going to come back someday and that's going to be the effect of the value. So do you wait until it goes down to $5 a share or do you buy it at $15 a share? That's the big question. It's a healthy company to some degree. And the reason I say that is I look at a, a ratio, the financials. Remember, we're looking at the fundamentals of the company. And one of the fundamental ratios is called the current ratio. The way you get that, and again, not to be too geeky, but it's an important number to know. You look at the current assets and you divide it by the current liabilities. And what that tells me is right now that the current ratio for the Mace Rich Company is 1.99. And when we compare that to other REITs, that's real estate investment trusts that are in the market right now, their average current ratio is 0.75. So what that really means is that this company has the ability to pay its short-term obligations very well. And that's good going into the future. Now, how about their earnings? What I've thrown up on the screen in front of you now is I'm, I went all the way back to 2014 and looked at their quarter, quarterly earnings. They've been kind of trending down over that time. And if you go a little bit further to the right of the screen, you can see that we're at a pretty low point. But hey, we did go through a pandemic and people that lease space in the Mace Rich malls or those real estate, they're, they're closing some of the stores and some of them, they're, they're basically renegotiating. But look, look at it this way. You don't want to buy GameStop right now or AMC by their landlord. This is the landlord for the quality real estate that these companies are putting their storefronts. That's where it is. Now, they're, they're, um, Earnings have been trending down, but they've been consistent. Another good thing about this company is the fact that it actually pays a dividend. Friends, dividends are awesome because it is in addition to what you have as far as valuation. Now, don't be fooled, though, because the dividend's not going to make up for the losses that this company has experienced. But it's going to pay you something to wait until you actually see some movement in the value. Right now, the dividend on this stock is about 3.16%. And when we go back and we compare that to the past, I have to stop just briefly and remind you, though, that any of this stuff is not going to be an indicator of what's going to happen in the future. It's not a guarantee. The past performance can't guarantee what's going to happen in the future. Now, what I put on the screen right now is I put up all the dividends back through 2014. And if you look at the average dividend, now remember I said just a moment ago that it was 3.16%. And you might be looking at the screen and thinking, but what's on the screen says that it, they pay 5.14%. Why is that? That's because that was based on the fact that there was a lower share value at that point in time. The average has been about 
5.14% over the net over the past 12 months. If we look at the five-year average, it's actually been 9.47%. But that's not going to make up for the fact that this company has lost value, quite a bit of value over the period of time. But I'm going to stop just for a minute. I'm going to take a breath. I want to thank our second sponsor of the day, which is Advice for Life Insurance. Your family needs you. Protect them with life insurance. You can find the best life insurance at the lowest price in less than five minutes at AdviceForLifeInsurance.com. Okay, let's get into talking about the bullish and the bearish aspects when it comes to the Mace Rich Company. Now, I've kind of touched upon this just a little bit, but the first characteristic that I want to talk about from a bullish sentiment is going to be that the Mace Rich Company really has high quality real estate and they have a variety of tenants. There's just not one particular type of tenant. I know that there's different areas like in Houston, there, there, there's a, a region of Houston where there's certain different types of retailers and there's just one. When we look at the type of real estate that the Mace Rich Company has, they have a variety of tenants and that's actually a really good thing for several different reasons. One is it brings in a variety of customers to those tenants. And number two, the Mace Rich Company doesn't have to depend upon one particular type of business for the profitability of their particular malls. Now, the second characteristic is that with high quality real estate, tenants are looking to maintain a presence. And when I say that, what I mean is the tenants that are there, you're going to have companies that never have had brick and mortar presence in the past. You might have different companies like Etsy or like Amazon or other companies that you might think of as, as, as online retailers, but they also want to have a brick and mortar presence too. Now, I don't know whether Etsy or Amazon is looking at real estate that's owned by the Mace Rich Company, but I can tell you that those circumstances where online retailers that are looking to have a brick and mortar presence, they want to have a high quality location and that's what they're going to look for. Now, the second thing to keep in mind is this. I talked about it just a little bit in the very beginning and that is based on the size and the quality of the real estate that the Mace Rich Company has, they are ripe for a takeover. They are ripe for purchase by a private investor. At three and a half billion dollars, a little close to that about the value of it in itself, you could have a larger company like Simon Properties that's worth about 30 billion that could come in and take over them. We'll talk about Simon Properties in just a little bit. But Simon Properties is a good example because in December, they took over Tubman, or it's Tubman, I believe it's spelled T-A-U-B-M-A-N. They took over Tubman Properties and they paid about $3.4 billion for the company. And that's something that we could see happen again with Mace Rich if their value continues to drop because they do have quality real estate. Real estate is one of those things that they're not making any more of. Now, from a Barry sentiment, you have to keep in mind that mall traffic may never be the same. And one of the problems that that's going to create is that you're going to have owners like Mace Rich, they're going to have to make concessions to different tenants to keep them happy. The retailers are not going to have the same type of profits that they had a year ago. And they may be working its way back because this pandemic, it's not going to be like that where you snap your fingers and all of a sudden it's over with. It's going to come back in different stages. And I think it's going to be a little bit of time, but we will get to the point where this pandemic will be behind us, where you're going to get to the point that if you have kids and you want to take them to see Santa Claus, you're going to want to go to the nicest mall because you haven't been there forever. Or if you want to take your family out for an evening, you're going to want to take them to a nice location. And that's what Mace Rich makes available. Now, Let's talk just a little bit about valuation. I've talked about some of the technical aspects of this company, but keep in mind that the fundamental aspects do drive the value a lot too. Now, what do I mean by that? When I talk about 
technical analysis. I am referring to things like measuring short interest and keeping in mind graphing and the, the, the history of the company's value, that type of thing. We've talked about that just a little bit today. But we also talked about the fundamental aspects of this particular company. Fundamentals are things like revenue, net profit. We talked about that just a little bit. But based on that, we go to a company like Morningstar, which their hallmark is fundamental analysis. And what Morningstar is saying is, even though this stock is trading at $15.70, and if you're watching, yeah, I know it says $16.66, but that was about an hour before today's close. But what Morningstar is saying is that they are pegging the value of this stock at $32.50 based on fundamentals that they measure. In their rating system, they would rate this as a four-star stock. Remember, though, that four stars, it's not like a Michelin star that a restaurant gets. Four stars basically means that it is undervalued. It's really undervalued by about 50% by their measurements. So keep that in mind. If it was a five-star stock, that would mean that it's even lower valued. It may get to that point, so we don't know. If we look at what it has done historically, I went to Morningstar's history of fair value, and what I've put up on the screen right now, it goes back to between 2016 and 2017. There was a point in time when the fair value was above the closing value or the actual market value just a little bit, not a lot. And if you're looking at the graph, you can see just a little bit of light in between the, the red line and the black dotted line. But as we've gone through 2018, 2019, and oh my gosh, 2020, how can we forget the coronavirus market crash that happened in February, March, where the market fell quite a bit, so did the value of the Macerich company. And we are where we are today, where we have a closing value at $15.70. And Morningstar says the fair market value is $32.50. So we have to ask ourselves, is that going to happen? I don't know. Let's look at what some of the other analysts are saying. Now, a lot of these are going to be more technical views rather than fundamental views as Morningstar is. Now, what I put up on the screen right now, you're going to have all these different brokerage houses and analysts, and they're taking their view on this, and this is what their opinion is. The most pessimistic view goes all the way back to July of 2020, and that's from Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is saying at that point in time, this is back in July, they were saying that the Macerich company was really only $6.50 per share. That was their estimate on the, on the market value. The most optimistic viewpoint is from Deutsche Bank. And Deutsche Bank is saying that their target price is between $16 and $8. $8, that's a lot of a difference from where they are right now at $15.70. And the most recent one, this was important to pay attention to this next one because this is from Morgan Stanley. And they're saying right now that their target price is between $10.50 and $11.50. And that was reported from them as recent as the 27th, just a few days ago. So keeping that in mind, all of these companies that are giving their estimates on this, they're saying that their estimates are that the value is much lower than where the value is right now. Now, do you think that a couple of these companies are shorting this stock? I do. I can't tell you whether it's going to be Morgan Stanley or Deutsche Bank or Goldman Sachs, but based on the fact that over 80% of the stock that's outstanding has been shorted. I'd say that there's a lot of companies that are shorting this stock. Now, the reason why that I picked this particular stock was I went to Barron's and I found a really interesting article. If you've never read Barron's, there's a lot of good information on stocks that's there. There was an article that came out on the 26th. It was called Another GameStop. Here are 10 next mo 10 most shorted small cap stocks. And I think this is a great list. You know, you'll find Mace Rich on this company along with a couple of others that you might not be as familiar with. But the reason that I picked Mace Rich out of all the others 
is because Mace Rich is the most undervalued from a fundamental standpoint. A lot of the other stocks are already well overvalued. I mean, take, for example, AMC and GameStop. They're, they're so far over their actual book value, their intrinsic value, that it's ridiculous. The market's just perpetuating it. But when we look at the Mace Rich Company, the Mace Rich Company is actually valued pretty good as far as its fundamentals go. So keep that in mind when you're looking at stocks. Look at what their fundamental value is based on um, the, the actual numbers of the company. Now, what's happened with the stock's actual value? We can talk about fundamentals and technicals all day long, but if we actually don't make money on the stock, it's all useless. It doesn't make a difference from that standpoint. If we go back in the Wayback Machine to the 29th of January of 2020, Mace Rich was trading at that point in time at $21.70, almost $21.71. But if we go and we look at it today, where it was trading at $15.70, and yes, I know the price on the screen says $16.68, but I did this a little bit before the close, so we didn't get the actual number. But the point is this, the past year has been not a good one for the Mace Rich Company as far as valuation of their stock goes. They've lost over 23% in value. Yes, they've paid a regular dividend and they continue to do that. And I think that that's a good indicator that the company is stable, but they have lost value. Now, I always have to remind you that the past performance is not going to be a guarantee of what's going to happen in the future. And we obviously think that hope that's the case in this instance, that it will go up in value. But you also can't use some of these indicators and think, I'm going to go short this stock or I'm going to buy options on this stock and hope to make money because there's no guarantees. Now, I think that it's only fair, too, that we draw back the, 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 the view on this just a little bit more and we go back even further in the Wayback Machine to three years. Three years ago in 2018, in January of 2018 on the 29th, this stock was trading at $52.58 a share. So, you know, the past three years has not been kind to this company. They've lost over 68%. On an annual basis, that's about a 32% loss per year. So you have to ask yourself, are we at the bottom or is there more bottom to come? That's a big question. How does Mace Rich compare to other companies? Because remember, we always look at the SEC philosophy that I utilize, the stability, the earnings, and the competitiveness. So how competitive is Mace Rich? Well, Real estate in general is under pressure because people are under pressure to make profits. You've got storefronts that are not making money as much as they did before the pandemic. That's pretty obvious. When you look at the spaghetti graph that I've thrown on the screen, you can it looks almost like brain waves that are moving together. And I think that that's a good indicator in a way because what it's doing is it's showing you that Mace Rich is not losing money any more than any other real estate trust or real estate company that's out there right now. The company's valued at about $2.53 billion based on the numbers that I had when this came up and that changes by the minute. Um, so it's considered a small cap value company. If we look at the closest company to it, it would probably be Brookfield Property, which is actually a smaller company valued at $676 million. And they actually ended the year pretty even from the standpoint of valuation. But you you can see that there's been a lot of volatility in the Mace Rich company in just the last few days. Now, I mentioned just a little bit ago, Simon Properties because of their purchase of Tobin, but Simon Properties is one of those companies, Now I don't know if they're looking at Mace Rich, but they're the type of company that might come in and buy a Mace Rich basically because it's undervalued. Um, their current value is around $30 billion, and they bought Taubman for about $3.4 billion. And then the fourth company that you see that's listed here is going to be Boston Properties, which is at about $14.21 billion. So there are some of those companies out there that are bigger, that might have the desires to buy quality real estate like what Mace Rich has, or there may be private investors that would do that too.
Always, always, always keep in mind the stability, the earnings, and the competitiveness of a stock. And if you keep those in mind, you can you can kind of get an idea as to whether that a, a stock is reliable or not. Now, if you use that SEC philosophy, quite frankly, uh, the Mace Rich Company fails just about every one of them. The stability is probably they their stability i think is going to be based on the fact that they're a real estate company there's not more real estate being made they have good quality real estate it's just that they're a victim of the current economic environment because of the pandemic so i think that from a stability standpoint um it will come back they're not very stable right now from an earning standpoint if we went back and remember, we talked about the current ratio, which was at 1.99, which is actually considerably higher than the average real estate investment trust. So they've got enough money, they've got enough liquidity to be able to pay their short term debts currently. So they're in good shape there. As far as competitiveness goes, there's other companies out there that are making better advances based on whatever's going on with that particular company. But we just have to look at it from the standpoint that at some point the pandemic will be over and people are going to want to get back out. The question with this particular company is going to be, do we want to invest in it now? Well, okay, let's look at this standpoint from a standpoint of, of optimism and pessimism. The pessimistic view would be it's never going to come back. The optimistic view would be at some point it's going to come back. And at some point, its value is probably going to come back too. And you have to ask yourself, what's a fair market value? Is it going to be around $15.70? Or is it going to be that $6 and something that Goldman Sachs said? All right, then we have to ask also the question of it is shorted a lot. And what happens if there is a short squeeze? Remember the short squeeze is where you have a lot of the retail investors that are continuing to push and buy the stock. Are you going to be one of them? Are you going to be one that's going to say, I think this stock's going to come back and it's worth more than $15.70. It's worth $30. It's worth $40. It's worth whatever. At that point, if you continue to buy it as retail investors, you're going to see that the short sellers are going to have to cover their short interest at that point, their short sales. And they're going to start to purchase stocks too. And that's going to drive the price up as well. At some point, they're going to have to have some fair market valuation. So we just have to see how the future is going to unfold. It's anyone's best guess as to how it's going to affect the mid-rich companies. Listen on February 11th and see what they say in their earnings call. And then you can hopefully get some direction there too. Well, friends, hopefully this has been helpful to you. Continue to write in and continue to let me know what your preferences are as far as stock market reviews of different stocks. And I can't answer everybody's questions, but I try. And let me know what your thoughts are. And I, I really enjoy hearing from people from all over the world and where you are thinking and living. And let me know what stocks that you're interested in. Stay tuned if you're listening for the disclosure, which is coming up after this. And if you are watching, it'll be on your screen. Have a great weekend, friends. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you.